with uh, Marjolaine Schuit, and she is the founder of Start With Dirt. And I am so excited to be able to have a chance to chat with her. Um, she is a garden historian. She has studied really how to um, create sustainable agriculture and sustainable gardens for the beginner to the ultra experienced and everything in between. And she's gonna share with us some of her brilliance on how to start a garden, why to start a garden, and then how to do it for the beginner who does not have the time, the knowledge, and a lot of the skills to start and really be able to create something that is magnificent, starting with dirt. So Marlene, I'm so excited to be able to have you here with us. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for inviting me, Jen. It's really a pleasure to talk to your community. And um, I, it's, it's such an honor to talk with you, like with a health coach. And uh, I saw your information and what you do for your clients is just amazing. So I'm really honored. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I would love to have you start out by sharing with us, really, what are the benefits of growing your own garden? I mean, obviously there's the health reasons to it, but can you dive in a little bit more on that and then other benefits that are there from having your own garden? That's such a wonderful question and I love to answer that one. Um, so it's gonna be a, a little bit of a longer answer because, well, the most obvious um, benefit is of course health. Um, growing your own vegetables are way tastier when you grow your own. Yes. Uh, they are also more beautiful and they're more lush. And so it's just amazing to grow your own food. Um, but then it's also really important to see the fitness level of gardeners. <laughs> yeah. So uh, people who tend to garden, they uh, tend to be a lot more fit and active because gardening is an active pursue or, or an active hobby, um, you would say. And there's actually a study done among allotment gardeners. So those are people who rent a patch to grow their own food. And that was on uh, elderly target area from uh, 70 to 80 years among that, that kind of age. And they tend to be a lot more healthier than their neighbors. So I think yeah. that's, that's huge. That was a really nice research done in the Netherlands. Uh, a big paper of it. Um, so that shows that gardening is a lot more. Um, there's also for kids, so I don't know if you, well, you you must have a big mom audience as well, or parents. Um, for kids, is, uh, it's a great way of learning about nature, of course, if you grow your own food uh, with kids. But it's also a uh, study shows, a research shows that kids eat a lot better if they grow their own. So yeah. that comes uh, with uh, growing their own food, knowing where it comes from, but also eating it together. So that that's a, a, a yeah uh, that has to be accompanied with growing your own as parents. So um, yeah. and then there's the the best layer I would say <laughs> about gardening, and that's a, I think that's a surprising one for your audience. Um, the the most benefit is actually the social aspect of gardening. Um, <laughs> Because you tend a garden, you tend to talk a lot more with people who also garden, um, or uh, you need to exchange food or talk about the weather. And those seem simple um, aspects of gardening, but these are really important. Uh, you do gardening together, and especially in communities or community gardens or allotment patches, you do it with with each other. Um, it's a community effort, and even if you have a small patch in your backyard or on your balcony. Um, you are passionate about being outside and caring for your plants and crops. So you talk with others, even if it's online, uh, you just find community. And I think if you find yourself lonely or um, you want to hang out more with other people, I think a great way to start is start with one pot of plant and you're good to go, I would say. Cool. So it doesn't really matter how big or how small your garden is, but really getting your hands dirty and getting into nature and really connecting. Yes, it's such a it's such a, a a primal level with with nature. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's also um, um, one other thing. It's that it's stress reducing. Mm -hmm. and that's not only the physical activity of gardening, like I mentioned, but it's also there are <laughs> aspects in the soil minerals that are actually reduces stress. So, um, and also the care aspect um, that you care for something else. Uh, um, and makes you less stressed. And that seems a far stretch, but that's actually 
what research tells us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, there's there, and there's so many points in, in what you just shared that are, are so critical. I mean, I can't tell you how many moms that I work with who kids whose kids won't eat healthy foods or won't eat this and won't eat that. And then they get their kids involved in the process, whether it's doing the prep work or standing next to the stove and stirring it. Obviously, be careful so they don't burn themselves. Um, but the more the more involved we are with our food, the more we want to eat that food, right? And that starts at two, three years old, I think all the way through adults, right? I mean, when we have the ability to really be comfortable and, and be engaged with our food and be present, it shifts how we eat and how that food nourishes us. Um, there's a lot of research that says it's not just what we eat, but it's how we eat. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. Yeah, those, are, those are great points. Absolutely. So, um, so in your experience, when we're looking at somebody that is just a beginner gardener, right? Like what are the first steps? Like how, when you're talking to somebody that's a brand new beginner, what are the first things that you would recommend them doing to get started with, with doing their own garden? Well, I would recommend not to get overwhelmed by all the information that's out there. Mm. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, well, I don't want to, because I'm a garden historian, I read more than a thousand articles and books about gardening. So wow. <laughs> a bit crazy like that, but that's, that's what research uh, asks for you. But I see what the problem with a lot of books uh, and starter videos and that kind of stuff is. It is way too intensive or way too overwhelming for people mm -hmm. to start. Yeah. You think you need compost and all that kind of stuff. But you just need a few simple steps and that's um, getting the right information, I would say. And I can link to a couple of resources or people can always ask me what to do. Um, but you also need clean materials. So you're pots need to be clean and um, you need some soil and some water and some sunlight um, and a good plan. So um, be careful not to buy any cheap kinds. Um, organic, is, organic is the best way if you want a garden. So uh, start off with um, a small uh, courgette or a zucchini plant and go from there. So don't buy 20 different kinds of species, <laughs> <laughs> but just start a little bit small. I started uh, years ago with one tomato plant. So okay. <laughs> now I have two full gardens. So that, that wow. just goes, yeah. So just starting with one and then figuring out how to do, how to grow one plant. Yes. Not killing it. Yeah. So are there, um, are there specific things that you would recommend um, or, or specific plants that are harder than harder to kill than others, because my mom was gifted with a green thumb. I unfortunately, mine is more black, and I tend to kill most things. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are kinds that are really easy to do. Everybody has a green thumb that's in our genetics. Otherwise, we couldn't survive. So, <laughs> but you need to know where to start. And our ancestors taught us what to select. But now in this generation, um, people don't know where their selection should be made. So I'm yeah. there for you <laughs> to make that selection. And you should start with stuff like radishes is really easy, beets. Um, lettuces tend to be a little bit more finicky but uh, so a courgette is really good way tomato but only the really well kinds pumpkins are a great way to start as well so i think that's that's enough to start <laughs> okay so more of the the root vegetables and the heartier foods yes yeah definitely but don't go into any kinds of crazy varieties i would recommend to start with a courgette and then um a species is Black Forest F1. <laughs> okay. That's the best way. And a zucchini is amazing because you can make soups and it can be made into pastas and uh, lasagnas and uh, you can make spaghetti out of zucchini. So I think awesome. that's, that's a great way to start and you can freeze it and you're good to go. So, cool. <laughs> so if somebody was going to plant zucchini, um, would they start with one plant? Is that enough to be able to create enough of a crop? Should they do more than one? Um, well, mostly it's um, with those kind of plants, they flower. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to attract some kind of bee to pollinate it or pollinate yourself. Um, and that's already sounds really hard, <laughs> but it's not hard at all. <laughs> you just need a brush and you need to find, well, that's, that's already too complicated. But 
two plants is actually a good way to attract some bees. Okay. So um, having multiple plants versus just having one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so when you say a clean pot, are we talking about like with bleach? Are you talking about vinegar? Like, is there a specific thing that we need to clean it with? Yeah. Well, not specific, but I would say your, let's, let me think what the name is. So if you do your dishes yeah. and um, <laughs> pick that, but okay. then make the organic brands um, okay. that are good for the environment, of course, and uh, don't have any pesticides or well, not pesticides, I don't know, chemicals or whatever. Yeah. So a really good clean brand um, is the best way to go in any case, I would say. Okay. I'm a big advocate of that, but uh, okay. especially when it comes to plants, because uh, when you start a small plant, um, I wouldn't start with a seedling, but start with a, a, a bot plant. They are really sensitive to their environment. And um, I'll start with something that's really clean. So clean your pots before you transplant a plant. <laughs> okay. And is there anything specific as far as soil or fertilizer and things like that? Can you talk a little bit about how to like, so I have my pot. Mm -hmm. Um, do I just buy regular potting soil? Is there a blend that I want? Is there like, are there specific things with the soil that I need to look at? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, and it's not hard at all, but what you need to look out for is potting soil mm -hmm. with a composter element to it. So with compost and mm -hmm. then you're good. <laughs> so that's it. You just need to water it a lot more if you start with potted plants. But the benefits of pots is that you tend to care for it a lot easier because it's near your door or um, anything like that. And it's a lot easier to weed, get the weeds out and take care of it. So I would start with a pot, but be mindful that you need to water it a little bit more than just in full soil. Okay. So if I'm doing a potted plant, um, you know, I, I know that I've seen people that, you know, are planting plants, at least mm -hmm. I don't know about vegetable plants, but plants in general, and they'll put like a layer of rocks or something like that in the bottom and then do the soil on top of that. Is that recommended for vegetable plants and things like that? Yeah. So that has to do with the drainage. Okay. Uh, that's a really good question because I forgot about that. <laughs> so it's important to have either holes in your pot and or indeed some rocks or a broken pot is also a good way to just flip it over and have the charts in the on the bottom um, so that it, your soil drains really well but okay. the benefit of adding compost to your soil is that uh, it tends to drain a lot better gotcha. um, and there's a lot of different techniques that you can get into but please just don't because the best way is just start off simple and make sure that there's some holes in there and it will be it will be fine <laughs> <laughs> So ideally, or I guess typically, how much time and um, effort and skill should I think about investing if I'm going to grow either a potted plant or step it up and do more of like a, a square foot garden box where it's like an above the ground box or an underground? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, because that's where it tends to go wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And, and not if you know the right way to do it. So for a potted plant um, or for any kind of plant, I would say, because that's the benefit of it, connect with it every day. So just check it every day. And if you go away, you arrange someone to take care of it, just like a cat. It's not, <laughs> that's not a no brainer, I would say. Um, but a potted plant is a little bit easier. So you just take a look at it, go out in the morning and check your plants for any pests or snails or that kind of nasty stuff if you have that. Um, and then you're good to go. So that's an effort of once a day or once in two days or once in three days. Okay. Um, if you have a square foot garden, um, that's a raised bed kind of yeah. thing. And that's a good way to start, but it's also a very expensive investment. A square okay. foot gardening system is expensive. So it's a good system, but be mindful of that. Then I would say, because you're growing multiple crops, well, take care of it every day. So go in the morning, water it, and go out at night as well to check it. Okay. Um, because I'm an advanced gardener, I can leave my garden alone for a little bit. And that also is the style of my gardening that um, I'm looking into permaculture. So that's a little bit more advanced, I would say. Okay. Um, 
and then you have less effort because you let nature do its job. So right. that's uh, plants take care of each other, and uh, well, that's <laughs> a whole different kind of story. Um, yeah, I think about companion gardening, but I think that that's like here's beginner, like here's beginner, here's maybe a potted or a square foot, and then you have the you know companion plants or kind of advanced yes. level. Yeah, but the potted plant is for like the beginner, um, but also the the master gardener plants in pots. I do it too. Um, okay. just a good way to start without the overwhelm, I would say. So that's, I think that's more or less a time plan. Um, but the best benefit for yourself is to check it every day. Okay. And when you say check it every day, are you checking for, um, moisture levels? Are you checking for pests and bugs? Are you checking for deer eating it? Like, tell me more about what you're checking it for. And especially with moisture levels, like how do you determine when you need to water it, does it ba is it based on the plant? Is it based on the timing or the heat? Or like, can you talk about some of those variables? Yeah. So in, uh, of course, in summer, you need to water it a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, and what you check for in a plant, if you check it, you check if there's pests. Um, and there's a whole lecture I can give you what to do with pests, but that's actually quite easy. But um, you check if there's lice on it or if it, the plant looks sad, soppy. Hmm? So if it looks like that, like ooh, that kind of plant face, okay, then you just water it a little bit and never water the leaves. Always water like at the bottom, bottom okay. of the plant. Okay. Yeah. Why is uh, that? Uh, because plants often don't like it, especially tomatoes are a little bit harder to do. They don't like it to be watered on top. I, I'm not okay. sure why, but that's just one thing. Um, <laughs> they don't like showers. I'm sorry? They don't like showers. They like baths. Yes. <laughs> they like to be big. Gotcha. Um, and what you also check for, if you have dry leaves, you take it out. Um, if your leaves look uh, off, you just Google it. What's, uh, what's wrong with my plant? Or you contact me. <laughs> what's wrong? Um, so that's what you actually look for. And if, if there's any slugs on it, you tend to remove them. Um, from your plant because they love your plant. So uh, there's also a little hack that I can share. Some copper wire around your pots uh, will keep the snails away. So really, yeah, interesting. Yeah. It gives them a shock. So I had no idea. Yeah, you yeah. Every day. That's yeah. Cool. And then you also uh, check the soil. So if it's really dry, you might wa want to water it. Um, yeah. But if it's really wet, just don't touch it because plants, plants don't like wet feet. So, okay. yeah. So, um, and your potted plants are typically going to be outside, right? If yep. you're doing crops and vegetables and things like that. Um, so, um, does it make sense to have a moisture meter where you stick it inside the, the pot to, to test the moisture level? Or is it really just you can tell by the by touch on mm -hmm. the top of the soil? Yeah, I would advise, of course, because I'm me, I would advise to really touch your plants with your hands. So okay. gloves is, for me, that's not necessary. Um, unless I have to remove snails because I'm who cool. <laughs> But for the rest, I would always say make contact with your plants. Um, and a water meter doesn't tell you enough, um, doesn't tell you enough about the status of your plant. So, yeah. Okay. So it's really getting your hands in there, figuring out how moist yeah. it should be. Yeah. So you don't want it sopping and you don't want it dry. So somewhere in between there. And that's why checking it every day really makes the difference. Yes. Yeah. And if they look lush and happy, then you're good to go. Then it's fine. <laughs> Cool. Is there any, any time that you should worry about too much water? Like if it's raining and things like that, like is there anything you should do protective wise or will the nature kind of sort itself out? Yeah, that, I think that's the best answer. Nature will sort itself out, but uh, drought is a more an enemy of your garden than wet. So okay. um, if it's really dry or if you live in a heat climate, just make sure that you water in the morning and water at night as well. So um, never water during the day because that tends to burn your plants. Hmm. Um, yeah, so just make sure that it's not too dry. But if it's too wet, um, you can always poke more holes in your pot or if you want to start there. Yeah. Okay, cool. So morning or evening, mm -hmm. never during the day though? No. Okay, <laughs> awesome. 
Um, are there any other tips that you have for a beginner that somebody that's like, I really want to get started and I'm really nervous and I feel really overwhelmed and like, what do I do? That's yeah, I totally understand because well, that's the problem with a lot of information out there. It's way too elaborate. So yeah. just learn by doing trial and error. Um, gardening is a, I would say a life investment, uh -huh. <laughs> um, not a, a money investment, but a life investment. You really, you take care of living plants. So just start with one or two uh, easy species and don't be afraid because you're, um, you're a human being. So you should know how to do this. Right. So if something goes wrong, it's not that bad. It's not, um, and another thing that might sound a little bit weird, but always harvest, <laughs> just okay. harvest your crops because that's better for your plants. Um, and then if you want to go into seed saving and all that kind of stuff, you can always contact me because that's a whole another ball game, but just start with a potted plant. Don't start with seedlings and work your way up from there. So yeah. Okay, so don't, don't start with seeds or the little baby guys, but really start with an actual plant. Just start with a strong, healthy, lush green plant. Um, and if people are interested, I'm working on a small step-by-step, um, -step, easygoing course awesome. where, uh, online. So people can actually follow me step-by-step -step on how to get started as a real beginner. And actually the really overwhelmed people um, and insecure uh, gardeners, I can help them out. So just this... I think it's 10 steps and then you only have the information that you need and not everything else. So I think that's good. Yeah. Cause I know that for me when I was, when I was, um, cause I've tried gardening a few times and, um, I say try because I can't say that I've ever really been successful because I start looking at one thing and I'm like, Oh, but I don't know which plants to get. And then I ended up growing, um, you know, my, my tomatoes were too tall and they overshadowed what did I next to? I think my peppers. And so my peppers stayed like this big and then, you know, the tomatoes grew big, but I didn't harvest enough. And then there wasn't enough water and it's just, Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> so I love the idea of just doing the potted plants and putting one or two yep. plants into a big pot mm -hmm. and then just watering them and making sure the rocks are in the bottom and things like that. Yep. Is it better to have a lot of, um, I guess a lot of little plants or doing something like, um, like I've seen these troughs that are probably, I don't know, like maybe three feet long and like maybe a foot deep and they're kind of raised. Um, and then it looks like you could be able to do like a small row of plants, maybe like three or four plants and something like that. You could do that. So let's see if, uh, um, because I'm not used to thinking of feet. <laughs> um, so oh, I think that's, that's about a, a half a meter or something. A meter is. Oh, <laughs> a meter is about three is about a yard. So like three feet. So it'd probably be about a meter. Yeah, I think that's um, then you have to look into a system like square foot gardening. Okay. I, I wouldn't advise to start there because it's expensive. Yeah, so I would advise to take a look at what kind of plants you want to grow. So those are the easy ones. And you want to. So uh, 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 a pumpkin type needs a big space so that's a meter wide so if you want to grow two pumpkins you need a little bit more space you also have miniature ones okay um so it depends on what kind of type of plant you want to plant to start off selecting your pot so take a look there what what the plant needs um average plant need about 15 to 30 centimeters to grow in um, and that's around average uh, that's mm -hmm. depth so I think you should go from there and then um, don't start off with five six different varieties because indeed yeah. that, that's where it tends to go wrong and that's sad I think you feel sad when something dies so just yeah. don't <laughs> mm -hmm. but if it does die don't beat yourself up of it because you tried and then you just move on you learn from what didn't work for you so right. are there um are there certain um I guess directions like if you're thinking about a house right and you've got north south east and west is there one side of the house versus another where plants are going to thrive better Oh, that's such a good question and such a hard one <laughs> because it all depends on the plant. A okay. plant um, that needs a 
a regular kind of sunlight are tomatoes and peppers and uh, pumpkins. Those need a lot of sun. So about six hours is good. So you okay. don't measure in north side, north or east or whatever. South yeah. tends to be the best, but that's also very hot. Um, and plants don't like uh, a lot of heat um, because they dry out easy. So think about where in my garden do I have six hours of sunlight and start from there. Okay, that <laughs> helps a lot. So that way it just kind of gives you that window of where do I get the most sun, but not necessarily direct like hot as, you know. Burning hot. And blazes, you know, in the summertime. Like where would I want to sit if I were outside versus yeah. the feeding exactly. some sun. Yeah. And that's the best thing of starting with pots because you can move them. So if it doesn't work yeah. on one spot, you move them to another. Oh, that not is too good. much, but yeah. Yeah. Instead of actually setting up your garden in one space, you can kind of test and see what works where. In yeah. Those pots. yeah. Awesome. So I would, I just want to kind of, I guess, paraphrase what I've heard you say and correct me if I'm off base. So the best place to start is with a pot and do one or two plants in that pot maximum mm -hmm. um, and start with a full, like a life-size plant that um, maybe not be blooming yet, but maybe is, is that that size where it would. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then touch it every single day, check the soil, check for bugs, water in the morning and in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to worry about any specific plant food? Mm, not per se. So if you have a uh, composted soil, mm -hmm. because that's important, um, check for that if there's compost in it. But tomatoes need a special kind of feed. Tomatoes, peppers, strawberry need the same kind of feed. So if you okay. see a bottle of tomato feed, you're good to go for your strawberries and peppers as well. So oh. that's a little hack as well. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> um, so uh, I also wouldn't advise to start with a tomato. I would advise to start with the simpler kinds. And okay. those don't need anything. So a radish, you just put it in the soil and it's, it just does it, oh, I would say, perfect for kids. And yeah. yeah. So when, when thinking about like radishes and, and potatoes and things like that, like you had talked about, how do you know when they're ready? Because they're below the ground and you can't see them. Yeah, that also depends on the plant. Okay. <laughs> I would say, um, Check online if you bought a, a variety. Um, check to see how long they take to. I don't know what the word is germinate. Nay, no. Yeah, germinate or come to maturation. Yeah. yeah. So just check it online. Um, then you're sure. But otherwise, if you think they're ready, just pull one out, <laughs> and then you see if it's uh, a bead of this size. You're like, yeah, okay, I can eat it. Um, <laughs> and eat your vegetables before they seed, so before they start blooming on okay. certain kinds. So beet, for example, they get a nice kind of flowery thing. Um, then they tend to get bitter. Okay. So uh, just with lattices and that kind of stuff. But zucchinis, you just let them grow out of the flower. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Very, cool. Very cool. So just touch them every day, make sure they've got enough water, um, pick off the bugs, and make sure that they're getting adequate exposure to the sun, but not too much. Yep, that's oh. correct. Did I miss anything? No. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. I mean, just those, those points simplify things so much. You, you yeah. have to simplify it for yourself. Don't get overwhelmed. That's not necessary with gardening. Yeah, well, I mean, just the, the amount of experience and the amount of studying that you've done with different gardens is fascinating because I didn't even know that there was well, I'm sure there was that many books, but I mean, a thousand books to read, a thousand books about gardening. I think my head would explode. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not only books, but articles as well. So that makes it easier. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. cheating here. Yeah. Um, but I mean, but that's awesome. And I love the fact that you're, that you're building this simplified course so that somebody that's brand new can really learn how to garden because it is, I mean, it is the best way to make sure that we're getting the, the, the most nutrient dense foods. Because if we're gardening our own garden and growing our own foods, then we're also going to eat in season. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be eating locally. So it's much more sustainable than trucking things across the country or across the world. And it really allows us to have that familial bond, the bond with nature, and really help us to stay grounded and connected in everything that we do. 
So I absolutely love that. I am super excited for your course to come up. When do you think it'll be released? Oh, <laughs> well, I have a two-year-old, so if that explains enough, I think <laughs> it'll take a long time. <laughs> but I hope in August. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But the gar garden season is every year around, so just follow along and you'll be fine, I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, talking about year-round. So I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we have winter from roughly October-ish to... Mm -hmm. March mm -hmm. slash, well, slash May, depending on when it wants to do it. So do you have any tips for continuing to garden or what to do in the wintertime? Yeah, I would say um, then your gardening season actually starts before the snow falls. Okay. Um, uh, you really need to make sure. So if you want to tackle on a big, bigger project, I would say, um, you need to make sure to compost the soil you, you want to plant your vegetables on before the snow falls. So that's, that's actually really, uh, important because then all the worms and everything in the soil does their, do the work, um, for you. So they dig in the compost and all that kind of stuff. So your okay. garden will be good to go around March. Nice. But you also need to make sure, so if you want to tackle on that bigger project I was talking about, you need to make sure to start your seedlings on time. Um, <laughs> I'm an experienced gardener, uh, I would say, and I started my seedlings too late. So, And that means that you don't have big enough plants to transplant on time. That sounds complex, and it is. <laughs> so, um, so when you're thinking about seedlings, how soon should you start those in the spring? It depends on where you live in the world, <laughs> okay. um, but I would say end of January, um, you should oh, wow. have everything set up. Yeah. Because so they're telling me I'm too late now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can try in direct soil. There okay. No harm done in trying direct because um, we have a saying um, in the Netherlands, uh, after 15th of May, you transplant everything. everything. Okay. So you're good, but um, yeah. <laughs> Buy a plant versus a seedling at this time of year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or seeds that can go in direct soil. So some pumpkin varieties, you can transplant directly seeds directly, flowers, herbs, that kind of stuff. Salads, mm, mm, depending yeah. to warm, but those kind of things. Okay, awesome. That's really helpful because you think about, at least for me, I think about gardening when spring hits. I don't think about it before that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's great advice to be able to start thinking about it before the snow falls, yep. seedlings in January, and then trans transplant things after April. Well, it depends on where you live. So uh, in the Netherlands, it's after May, 15th okay. May. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think you guys are maybe a, close to the same temperament that we have, um, maybe a little bit, a little bit cooler. I think so, a little bit warmer. You're warmer there? I think so, but I'm not quite sure uh, okay. how maps work out and that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that would make two of us, apparently. <laughs> Horrible. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. This was so helpful. Absolutely. So I just want to thank you so much again for joining me, Marjolaine. Um, and your website is startwithdirt.com. Uh, well, it's uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Start okay. With Dirt, um, because my business is quite new so i'm setting up my uh website and everything but it's i think it's more important to connect with me uh yeah. in a direct way via facebook and then i chat with you and if you have any questions you're you or your tribe just hit me a message and i'll happy to help and i always want to add like 10x value to everything <laughs> so yeah. um yeah no worries i i love to talk with people so yeah Awesome. You've definitely added 10x value today. I mean, I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time all the way from Netherlands. I know it's late in the evening over there for you. Um, but I just, I really appreciate you jumping on the phone and um, being able to share some of your expertise with us. I know you have a lot more and I'll be looking forward to connecting with you on Facebook. Let's start your dirt or start with dirt. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh...